Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It is so good to be back here with you. Um, it's been a kind of a weird morning, uh, but this edition of the Feedback Loop should, if I did this right, should be the first in a long series of ones that are leveraging CouchBot again. So thank you all to the CouchBot team. Um, you know, I, I really, I really believe bots are one of the one of the the key ways that I can effectively do a lot of this without without having to to focus on the overhead of kind of constantly grabbing information from all these different places and serving it to you. Um, I really rely on uh, bots like Couchbot and C2Bot, which is over in uh, in Jobbybot. Um, so we have three channels. Are that that are primarily bot driven one the general channel is bot driven by Couchbot. Uh, that's the bot that fires off and tells you when I'm live streaming um, and when new videos are being posted then there's C2 bot uh, which is uh, posting all the um, designer news to uh, the around design channel and then Jobby bot which is posting all the design jobs from we're looking at really eight different sites um, and pulling uh, relevant um, design jobs off of that site and Couchbot did just fire um, so Couchbot's function again so you should be getting uh, live live results um, showing you when in fact I am operating and I'll just sh uh, I'll share my screen now so we can go over and take a peek at that um, so let's see over here in general hey look at there um, I am not currently playing a game. That's the only thing I don't like about Couchbot. They reformatted it, and Couchbot is really um, is really focused on um, uh, gaming, uh, the gaming community. Um, as you can see, Chris is live streaming now and uh, li is live streaming on YouTube right now, and it gives you this. But I'm trying to talk to them about how do I remove that because I'm not playing a game. If anything, I'm um, I'm here uh, as it says here. I'm UX UI with friends. That was my intention to go there, but whatever the case, um, just know that when you see this fire off, I am live and, and working on uh, giving feedback or um, holding a workshop. But uh, obviously, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a little under the weather, so I'm going to try to try to be a, a bit a uh, bit more efficient here this morning. And let's go ahead and jump into it. There were a couple of things that I wanted to cover today. Um, one was um, related to uh, multi-language websites, um, and this is something that Rebecca is uh, is really fighting through right now with regard to um, the WordPress project she's working on. Um, multi-language websites actually, um, I think, are going to become more the norm rather than less so. Um, English is um, English is a great um, great uh, it, it's a lot of people overseas know English okay but that doesn't mean that they always want to deal with uh, websites in English and uh, Rebecca has, has the perfect situation where she's in Israel and they uh, her, her client wants a uh, Hebrew based website um, there's a lot to be aware of there. Um, Hebrew moves right to left. Uh, most uh, westernized languages uh, like French, German, uh, English, uh, Spanish move left to right. So it's a completely different switch of the design. Like it, everything about it just flips um, unless you have some centered text, which oddly enough, Rebecca does. Uh, but but WordPress has a plugin for this called Polylang. And getting Polylang up and running uh, can be somewhat tricky. And the main reason that is, is because Polylang doesn't want to show you um, options for languages that aren't currently being translated. So to, to give you a peek into this, I, I have a, a, the Design Pragmatic um, WordPress sandbox and I created the sandbox so that we could we could begin to root around at this problem without working in somebody's live project so 
in this, we have this drop down here. And as you can see, I have the Israeli, uh, I have Hebrew and I have English. If I click on Hebrew, um, you'll notice the entire page flips, flips direction. But you'll also notice that now I have, I have a, a much different menu here. And I want to focus in on what's happening with this menu because it, if we go back over here to the English version, you know, this, this, this menu, it drops down. Um, but when I come back over to the Hebrew version, it's doing something quite different. Um, this actually, if you're picking up on it, it says add widget down here at the end. And here I have add widget at this end. So what that means is there's something happening in the menu. So I'm going to go to dashboard. And here on the dashboard, I'm going to come down to appearance menus. All right. So we have the, we have a couple of menus and you can select I have primary English and primary Hebrew here. Um, if I select primary Hebrew, and I come to this language switcher, you can see that I can, uh, I have I have not chosen to display as a dropdown, and nor have I chosen to display the flags. Um, I could I could change this, obviously, but I want those options to be present. Um, I also could hide the current language. So what that would mean is that on um, on a menu, if I was on the Hebrew page, when I hit the drop down, it would just show English. Um, that's not really a great idea because um, otherwise I don't really need a drop down. I just needed to say English. So for right now, I'm going to leave the drop down. I'm going to allow you to select between the two. And I'm going to hit save. And once that's done, I want to come back to the site and I want to see if that, if that menu has now changed. So here we have Design Pragmatic, and we go down here and we switch it. And what we're looking for is a drop down on this side now. And sure enough, we have that. So that's one quick way to adjust this. I want to focus in on something else, though, that was causing an issue. And it's not just the, the difference in the menus, but it's also the fact that I have these posts here. And right now I have a I have a post in Hebrew and I have a post in um, English. What you will notice though is I have an option for Spanish here and specifically Mexican Spanish um, or a Mexican the Mexican dialect of Spanish. Um, but that's not showing up in the drop down. And it's not showing up in the drop down because there are no pages or posts that have been created for that language. So even though the language, if I go down here to languages, even though Spanish has been entered with, again, a specific uh, locale of Mexico, even though Spanish has been entered, nothing's showing up because it has zero posts here. So what I want to walk through really quickly is how do we get that to show up? So I'm going to go to all pages and you'll notice that there is the Hebrew homepage. And there is the actual homepage. If I wanted to make this, um, if I wanted to connect this to the English homepage, I would simply just hit edit. And, oh, I have to uh, restore that, I guess, because it appears that I threw that into the trash. Let's go to the trash can. Nuevo pr Pragmatic. Actually, I want to empty the trash because I want to build this from the ground up. So I'm going to hit empty trash. Please empty trash WordPress. Okay, so the trash has been emptied. I'm gonna go back to all. So now I want to edit the homepage. 
And here I have my translation for the Hebrew version of the homepage. I'm going to add one for the Spanish version. Nuevo um, Oh God, I've, I've now forgotten um, the Mundo, Nuevo Mundo, I believe is the proper translation. Nuevo Mundo um, means new world, um, I believe. So I, I want to check that. Yes, that would be what I'm looking for. Mundo Nuevo. Mundo Nuevo, New World. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I had Ola before. Regardless, um, I'm just going to publish this. I'm not going to add any other content. It doesn't really matter even if I put that in Spanish. I could have just said Spanish page, um, and it, and it would have worked fine. The goal here, though, is is so that these are linked. So if I go back to pages, just go to pages, and let's look at this. I'm here on pages. I have uh, Mundo Nuevo, I have Home, and then I have the, the Hebrew uh, version. And if you look through here, there's there's little pencil marks that say I can edit this page. But all three are connected. So we, so Hebrew, home, and and uh, Mundo Nuevo are connected. I want to view the home page, so I'm just going to go up here and visit site. And what I'm looking for now is I'm looking for that 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 his, uh, Spanish flag to show up, and sure enough, it does. Now something very weird is going on. Why did my navigation change so drastically? Um, well, it's because I don't have a menu created for the Spanish page. So to, to do that, I need to come back to menu and I need, I need to create a menu that's going to, that's going to populate that navigation. And again, we're not really focusing on the design. We're focusing on the mechanics of this and, uh, um, because one of the things that was really, really frustrating about this is you can create the languages, you can uh, create the different menus and whatnot, but nothing's going to populate until you actually connect a and say, this is a translation for X. Prior to that, nothing shows up. So now I'm going to say create new menu. And I'm going to call this one um, menu. Sorry menu uh, MX and I'm going to create the menu and now I can begin adding things to this menu this will be the primary menu for sp the Spanish Espanol um, I'm going to add languages to the menu so, so I'm going to say add menu so we have languages to the menu uh, I'm also going to add um, going to add a few of these pages as well. Now we can argue all we want on whether whether those are the pages that we should be adding or not. Um, I'm going to move this one to the bottom. I'm going to keep that Mundo Nuevo to the top. Uh, courses FAQ, and now I will save this menu. Also, another another key point, and this was something that uh, I was really struggling with uh, when I was trying to go through yesterday and, and help Rebecca. This language switcher doesn't automatically show up. It's actually under screen options. I, I have to physically turn it on here to have that option available. And if you don't realize that this, this drop down is here, this is the view that you get. And I, that was a that was a really big pain point. It took me, uh, gosh, I, I don't know how long it took me to figure figure out that I had to turn it on. I thought it was just going to automatically show up because so many things in in WordPress when you install a plugin they just 
show up uh, like show all languages up here it's just there um insights uh, plugins uh elementor like all of those things just populate so this was what this was a situation where that didn't happen um but let's go back and let's um let's visit the site now and now we've got the three pages if i go to espanol you see i have a much different menu although notice what happened i have english uh, hebrew and espanol side by side so if i click on english i get back to this page that we recognize and it and it's like it's a little weird it's like well why is that happening well if you follow along i didn't go into the language switcher and designate how i wanted that to, to show up um, and actually I'm, i need to be over in menus but i didn't designate how i wanted that to show up so if i go to the language sw switcher and i say drop down and flags this is going to operate now uh, in the same manner that the other menus operate, which is what I what I really believe you probably want. You probably aren't aren't seeking out a different design for each of these menus. And now we should have that. So Espanol, Hebrew, English. Okay, so that's just a quick walkthrough, um, Rebecca. I hope that's helpful um, in how to, how and why those um, those uh, menus and and languages are showing up and when they're showing up and why they're showing up the way that they're showing up. Um, this is a you know an ongoing. Uh, I'm sure sure there's a lot more work to do. But, but know that um, as you're working through, you know, there is no m real magic to polylang. Polylang is simply saying, oh, you have pages of content or you have posts of content. Well, I can switch these out for you if you want. Um, I, can, I can make sure that the, the, the Spanish homepage or the Hebrew homepage shows up at the appropriate time. You just have to come through and connect these things together. And I'll take care of that. Um, also, you have to create multiple menus. Um, but this is how you support multi-language. Um, there's, you know, everything is uh, unfortunately a little more manual than you probably anticipate. You probably, when most people think about multi-language, you're probably thinking, oh, I install a plugin and it just automatically translates. It can, but you shouldn't trust your home pages to that. Okay. So moving along, uh, we're going to jump over here to take a peek at Luigi's case study. And Luigi had a hole in his case study, last I checked. Um, so Luigi's obviously working through the UX program. And at the end of the UX program, I, I have students uh, make a case study. Like basically, it's a case study to date. Uh, here's what I've worked on to date. Because now they're about to go through a battery of interface exercises to elevate their uh, their visual design skills and their interface design considerations. Um, it's not just like what font should I choose? It's what should happen when they click on this button? Um, what should happen? How should these screens move around? Um, so, so interface design, I, I, we pause, we pause our UX research to work on interface design because I don't think, I, I think it's more than just like, Ooh, I'm going to drop some colors in. It's like what colors and why? Um, but here he's, he's working through, um, his documentation. And as you can see, like there's just a ton of design artifacts that, that have been created. Um, he's got his overview. I've read through a lot of this. The big piece that was missing is we didn't have anything on information architecture and also affinity mapping. It wasn't clear what, what the order of operations were like, what are our priorities here? So I'm seeing like, uh, cost consciousness, food preferences, and dietary restrictions, ease of use, schedule and lifestyle, customer service. Like, so he's got these big zones, but he's got like action items inside of each. So that, that's that's really good to lift that out 
Um, he's got his persona, story mapping. Ooh, so we, okay. So now he's like, like, yeah, you definitely added a chunk to this. My goodness. Okay. So there's a ton of stuff in here now for information design. At this point, I began to focus on information design of the website, starting with user flows and mapped uh, the path the paths a user would take when ordering food. That's a little awkward, but we can work on that. Uh, by mapping out each and every uh, step, um, by mapping out every step, a user would take uh, uh, would take a clearer picture of the user's needs, as well as the decisions that they faced. When they, uh, they are faced with uh, to emerge below the paths that I mapped out. So this is good. It kind of gives you a, an idea of, of what you should be able to follow through the application. Um, you got your priority guides. Um, and now you're kind of showing the initial sketches and the wireframes and then moving into prototype. Okay. Okay. And of course you took that final prayer. It looks like you took that final paragraph and you, you busted it up. Um, the key here on this final paragraph is when you have multiple things that you're, you're, uh, you're mentioning re related to your growth, it's important to make sure the, the reader is pausing with each of those. Like, if, so if there are three big bullet points that were like, Hey, here's how I grew. You don't want them to see one paragraph at the end and kind of skip over it. Um, we, we process shorter chunks of type as more, um, or as less daunting and, and that, that extra space in between, I think I'll, it invites people to take, to go, Oh, I can, I, I'll take a few seconds here. There's, there's some particular information. So, um, really good work there, Luigi. I, I like it. I want to take a little more time up here, uh, to read through it, but I, I, you've you've definitely addressed the parts that I thought were missing, um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think I think you've done a really good job. And, and the organization, uh, the organization of these of these uh, case studies is is just fantastic. Eve, I spoke with Eve yesterday. Luigi, your your work, Kara, um, any one of the three. Uh, are going to are going to be uh, really highly sought after, in my opinion, uh, at least from what they've shown through the UX por portion of the course. So um, kudos there. I'm going to spend a little bit more time with Luigi, but I really feel like you're you're pushing forward. Um, final bit here, and let's go to um, hey, th there I am in all of my uh, I guess I'm in like seven or eight screens. Uh, let's go over here, and obviously you don't care anything about that. But what you probably do care about is Tejil's project, because why wouldn't you care about Tejil's project? She's great. I I, I think Tejil's awesome, and you you should too. Uh, Tejil's working on idea board. She's been um, busy uh, hustling at this for a while. I'm gonna check my status to make sure. Okay, it's clean. Let's get pull origin origin master. So. So what Tendril's been trying to do with Idea Board is um, is simply get the get this new case study uh, together, and I'm gonna go ahead and go live with it. Um, let's see what we've got here. So let's just go to projects, Idea Board. So. Huh. Idea board had an I some images. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um, that took a minute. I'm not sure why it took a minute though. Um, so it's not like that was slowly. It's not like that was fighting up, up an uphill battle against uh some big background or, or whatever um uh, so i'm not really entirely sure what the slowdown was there um 
Yeah, that's lagging, and I'm not really sure completely why. So we need to take a look at that. Um, so tools you, you used, obviously you're gonna drop in some icons there. Um, it's weird because I, I kind of lose like my task included. There's like a lot of space here. This feels like separate I thoughts. Um, and duration kind of feels like it's just kind of hanging out. So there's some work that needs to be done there. Um, uh, you might even be able to go three, three, and three um, with the depth that you have over here, but I, dig I digress. Uh, problem solution that's clean. My process, uh, I want to see what's going on here. Uh, so there's process. The container idea process, uh, padding. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone. Um, oh, interesting. Um, Okay, so that's noted out. Um, I would I would encourage you to. Um, you've got this no mobile. I think that needs to be on this div because this div is adding a lot of space here. Um, yeah, so if we just delete it, that div, it's a lot closer at at least. Um, I just kind of want to take a peek here. Uh, what else is happening here? There's. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I see, I see how you're adding this information in. Seems like that no mobile be helpful. Um, it also seems like, you know, you mentioned previously that you liked having the space uh, to the inside. I would just give it to everything. So like, you know, if you've got the space up here, make sure the, the divs below it have it as well. Not just the things that are inside of uh, the gray boxes. Um, like, you know, otherwise, you know, like go out or go in, but don't go in and out. Um, so I'd simplify that. Um, yeah, it's weird because I'm trying to get to the bottom of. Yes, it's like this goes away. And now the spacing is much closer. If not exact, um, it's certainly much, yeah, it's, well, it's almost exact at that point. Um, so I think there's some, this spacing on the bottom of the P tag. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that is coming over from, some, from other places. Uh, it seems like if I come down here to user surveys now though, and look, Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Man, there's there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Oh, that's that's down there. I'm not sure. Let's refresh this. Ugh. Um it's interesting that this section Sorry, that just went away really fast. Um, come on, come on. It's interesting that this user survey section has like padding to the top, but this survey analysis does not. Um, and I think that's where the issue is happening there. Uh, same thing with persona. 
it seems like. Um, so here's your container, but the background isn't subsequently pushing up it either. So I'm having I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding the spacing here. Um, yeah, it looks like the CSS lines aren't coming in either. They might still be as SVGs. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, they're still SVGs. So uh, that's where I would bring in the CSS that we talked about last week or so. Um, some spacing here. Um, you know, I... The spacing around that, you know, this this circle inside of the box, it's, it's not really working. I think if you were going to make the this cir I I go either smaller with the circle or go with image in a box. Um, I wouldn't go circle kind of barely touching the sides. Um, I don't think it's as strong. Competitive analysis, okay. Opportunity again. We've got like a lot of space, not a lot of space. Um, this is kind of getting real floaty. I'm not I'm not sure the, the line height here is working. Um, okay, so that's user flows. You need space there between. Um, got quite a bit of space here. Again, I want to take a peek at that. Um, okay, so, but that's not all coming from here. So why is that? So wireframes has got its space, but sort of, okay, so flow here this div for flow has a margin bottom on it that you don't need. Um, search, validate. Uh-huh. Yeah. This just like, I'm not, I'm not seeing this large enough. I don't know if you should just like maybe, maybe utilize this image differently. I want to look at it at a larger scale. Okay. There's that. Um, the icons are nice. Montserrat Open Sans. I'm not sure why you would use Montserrat and Open Sans together. They're basically the same font. Uh, they have a very similar structure. Um, Open Sans isn't narrow enough to use with Montserrat, but that's a project question. Um, Okay, well these are nice. I really like this. I, I almost would rather see like two by two instead of three by three, because two by two I can see them with a greater fidelity, but three by three I can't see them quite well enough. Uh, key takeaways. Yeah, some of the stuff is just spacing. Um, you know, overall, uh, on just like a first pass, I see some spacing issues, but I like the ideas. Um, you know, I, I do think I would edit this down so that I can get a little more visual pop out of those images. Um, I would I would consider editing this as well so I can kind of see them. I do wonder if these should be bigger. Um, almost to the point that I want them like in the background in a, like a hover state on the text, but this is just me riffing. Um, they're, they're not bad. I just can't see the area that you're highlighting enough. Um, like if I, if I could, if I could see this, if I'm going to just kind of crop it, if I could see this like that, it would still be better because I, it just like, it's going to elevate it by 33%. Um, and I'm going to be able to see the difference between the before and after. So those are just a few of my thoughts. Um, I do think that you're you're you know, you're clearly well on your way. If I refresh this though, like the space here is just too much. Um, and you know this feels like it's like being aired out. I, I don't think it needs as much space. 
So, so that's my two cents on it. Um, I, I think it's, it's clearly really nice. I do want to know why this is loading so slow. Um, and we can, we can dig into that. Um, we can, we can dig into that, but I, I am, sh I was shocked to see it load in so late. Um, and it's not, I, I know it's not like you have a, it's not like you have some sort of fade in animate on this. So there's something probably going on with the size of that image. Um, and as I see hi-fi hero SVG, I'm not sure why that would be an SVG. It looks like an image. Um, if that's an SVG, it's like drawing all those little things. And that's just, uh, that's just crazy talk. It's, it's too big. So, um, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this edition of the feedback loop. I certainly appreciate, um, uh, everybody jumping in. It looks like Michelle is here. Um, I think Michelle is from Los Angeles. So welcome to the clubhouse. Um, that's it for me. And I am going to, uh, I'm going to go take care of this nose because I've got a head cold and I will chat with all of you later. Katie, I'll chat with you in about 90 minutes. All right. Take care, everybody.